Welcome to episode two of Linux for Beginners with a Beginner. Uh, I'm Andrew and we're going to be taking a look at the command line basics in this video. We're going to be covering a fairly long list including LS, CD, CP, MV, RM, RMDIR, um, MKDIR, grep, chmod, cat and sort and a few other commands as well. So I highly recommend you take a look at this video. I will leave some time codes to each different bit below. So if you're just here to find out what cat does or what grep does or what the wild cards do, then feel free to skip to those points in the uh, description down below. Otherwise, uh, yeah, sit back and enjoy. One of the most basic commands that I really do recommend you take a look at and have a play with is ls. Now, when you type ls, that basically just lists all of the files, uh, the visible files that are in the folder that you're currently, you know, sitting in. That's basically the same command as dir in Windows or in DOS, uh, and does basically the same thing. Now, you can do a few variations of this, so you don't actually have to list what are all the files are in the specific folder you're in. You can actually list the files that are in a different folder. So, for example, uh, the dot dot command is basically the folder up from the one you're in. So, if you have dot dot, then it will show you all of the folders and files that are in the folder above the one you're in. You can also do ls a and that shows you all of the hidden files as well. So that's also quite nice. So the next command you might need to know is actually a fairly standard one that is cd or change directory. Now cd allows you to, well, basically change directory. So if you want to change to, in this case, let's go to documents. So you just type in cd and then the place that you want to go and now we're in the documents folder. If you want to go back, you can just do the dot dot for the next or the folder up from the one you're in and if you want to do the folder you're currently in then you can also just do a single dot. If you're ever lost and you want to return to your home directory you can just do cd and then the little sort of squiggly line or the tilde uh, as people call it and if you want to go to your root directory you can do cd slash as well and of course cd tilde will take you back to your home directory. So the next one you might want to know is cp. This is copy, it's exactly what you would expect it would be and uh, basically just allows you to copy so you type in cp and then say file one which is the name of a text file that I have saved in the home directory and so you want to copy that to your documents folder you would do uh, dot slash documents uh, and then maybe call it file two now that's copied so if we go to ls we can see we're not in the documents folder so we go cd to change into the documents folder uh, and then we can ls and see that there is a file two in there. You also have mv or move, which does the exact same thing. You can also do rm, which is remove or delete. So if we want to delete that file, there we go, we've just removed it. If you want to remove a uh, directory, that's rmdir. And if you want to make a directory, then that's mkdir. And then you put whatever you know directory you want to call. Uh, and then in that case, I've just made a directory inside the documents folder called directory and then if you want to remove that then you do rmdir and then the name of the directory you want to remove. Cat is actually quite an interesting one. It allows you to bring things together, lists together. Also it allows you to create lists using the operators like uh, less than or greater than. So in this case we're using the cat uh, command uh, and then pushing into the file list, uh, list two let's say. Uh, and this is going to allow us to put in a list of items. So maybe pair apple uh, and type team GB uh, and tell me which one's the odd one out. We also do control D to end that and then we can read that file back by using cat and just saying list two. Now if we create a second list, perhaps list three uh, and do banana, if I can spell, uh, oh, pineapple, I'm gonna misspell something here and uh, PC centric. Uh, again, tell me which one's the odd one out there. We can then uh, also read back this file, so cat list three, uh, and as you can see, that's there. But if you want to actually concatenate those uh, lists together, we actually do cat list two, list three, and then create a new list from that, say, call it uh, big list. Uh, and then that should work, and we can call cat big list to look at that list which, uh, if I can spell it right, uh, would be very fantastic. That's big list, well done. Then we can see that the two lists have been combined together. We can actually add to lists as well using a double operator here, as you can see. So uh, you can actually add extra things. So I don't know, strawberry uh, and raspberry. There you go. So then we can do control D to exit of that and use cast 
uh, cat list to, to now see that we have extra stuff in our list uh, and in our original list. And we can also sort that using the sort command. So you could do perhaps sort big list uh, and that will just sort the big list for you. You can also do sort uh, with the same command, we're actually pushing the big list into the sort, which is why the operator is that fashion. Uh, but we can also do uh, this fashion and then have uh, the other side of the operator to push into s list or sorted list, in which case we can then do cat s list and see that this is a fully sorted list in its own file. grep is an interesting command because it's basically search. So if you're searching for the word, uh, say, science in a science.txt file, uh, then you can use grep to find that word. You can also do a different configuration. So grep-i will give you, uh, basically it won't care about capitalization, which can be useful if you're just trying to find the word uh, in a file. Uh, you can also do dash v, uh, which will display only non-matching lines. You can also do dash n to show the matching line number and you can do dash c to only print the uh, total number of lines matched uh, in that specific file. So uh, a very interesting command. In this case I might do grep i uh, and then perhaps uh, the word apple in s list uh, and then we'll find that it's matched the word apple as well as also uh, the word apple inside pineapple. Another important thing to know is actually the wildcard operator. So this is the star that on my keyboard is above the eight uh, and also the question mark. So the star allows any a number of characters before or after depending on where you put the star and the question mark allows for exactly one operator that you don't necessarily know. So in this case, if you're trying to display all the stuff that is in a list, but you don't exactly know which number the list was in, you can put list question mark and that will display the contents of of all of the list files uh, that you have saved here. You could also do list, uh, the same command, but list with the star at the end, and that will do the exact same thing, but uh, this is just anything with the, the word list and then anything after it. Uh, this won't work because we don't have any files with something before the list, uh, but you could put the star before that, and if you did have, say, big list, for example, then you can see all of that stuff and the word list in there as well. chmod is a command that if you're using, especially if you're installing any programs on Linux, is something that you definitely need to know. This allows you to modify the permissions of files and if you're installing stuff this is a, a very important thing to do as not all files come executable and you need to add execution privileges which will go into the installing programs video which is actually the next one that will be out next week so do take a look at that one but uh, the simple answer is you do plus x and then whatever the name of the file you're doing now that means plus so you're adding permissions and x means executable you're adding permissions to, at this point in time, you're just adding permissions to the user field of people, whereas you also can add, add data to either U for users, G for group, or O for other. You can also add A for all if you like as well. And obviously R is read, W is write, and X is execute. Now a common thing that you might see on the internet is 777 or for example 755. Uh, these are a sort of common way or a quick way of adding a certain set of permissions for the different user groups. So the first number equates to the user or the you know the person that's actually typing stuff in a terminal. Uh, group is an uh, other are the second two numbers there. Uh, so you, in this case, seven means that you have read, write, and executable privileges. Five means that you have read and execute privileges, but you can't modify the file as does the second five. So this is a common web server configuration. Whereas if you just want to install a, a file or create a folder uh, and make it usable for everyone, 777 means that everyone who has access to that folder has the permission to do everything from reading, writing, and executing. You should now have a fairly basic understanding of terminal commands and the main ones that you're probably gonna be using as a beginner to Linux. Hopefully this has been useful for you if it has let me know in the comments down below and of course subscribe and share the video or the series as well this is still a new series it's only episode two so if you've got any suggestions for what i should cover next or if you've got any suggestions about uh, just the the series in general let me know in the comments down below as i would really love to hear your feedback 
Otherwise, there will be another video next Saturday at 11 a.m. GMT talking about how to install programs and the various ways that you can do that on Linux. So if that seems like an enjoyable and potentially useful video, feel free to subscribe for that as well. Otherwise, I'll leave some other videos over here for you and the subscribe button over this side. As I said, let me know what you think in the comments down below. And of course, it would be great if you could use the Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links when you're buying anything else. And there's some merch in the uh, link down below as well. But otherwise, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you all in the next video.